before I start, I just want to take a minute to congratulate Tamara again on uh, being chosen as a distinguished alumnus. When I was a resident, she was known as the super fellow. And I was like, what, what was that? It's because she, she had to do uh, the job of a fellow and attending because uh, the previous attending had uh, left mid-year. And uh, I thought it was just a, such a fitting term because she was just not just a super fellow, she's a super human being and now a super uh, alumna. So congratulations again. And uh, <clears throat> so I have an interesting uh, talk. Uh, I got interested in this because uh, I, I read a lot in, in just lay uh, <laughs> journalism that, uh, that California is expecting a, a ballot initiative at the end of this year, uh, which most uh, political analysts uh, feel will pass, making uh, California the fifth uh, state to uh, legalize recreational uh, marijuana use. Uh, we were the first to legalize medical use in 96, uh, but the uh, end of this year. So, so I kind of got interested in, in seeing, well, how, how can ophthalmologists sort of benefit or uh, participate in this uh, new trend? And uh, so, so that's the, the talk here. So as you probably are somewhat aware, you know, this topic has been talked about for 40 years. Uh, back in the 70s, uh, there were actually a lot of NIH-sponsored uh, studies in, uh, in this stuff. And uh, so uh, it was shown that uh, it does lower intraocular pressure. And, uh, <clears throat> But the problem is it, it, it's a systemically administered medication. So there are a lot of effects that they're not controlled. And so, uh, you know, it, it can lower your blood pressure uh, and it, it uh, has other effects. You know, the psychotropic effect obviously is the, is the, is the biggest one. So because of all of that, um, whoa. Um, it, it was uh, really not not used, and it wasn't until actually 1970 when when uh, DEA uh, put it on the uh, class one uh, category as a controlled substance. With uh, basically that means that it uh, has high potential for abuse, uh, but uh, no demonstrable uh, medical uh, benefit at the time back in uh, 70 back in 1970. Um, and so because of all of that, actually, the, uh, the American uh, Glaucoma Society, the American uh, uh, ophthalmology uh, community uh, put out this uh, statement. Uh, it says basically, although marijuana can lower the intraocular pressure, its side effect and short duration of action coupled with the lack of evidence that its use alters the course of glaucoma preclude recommending this uh, drug as any, in any form of treatment of glaucoma at the present time. And actually our own uh, Ann Coleman was uh, part of this commission that, that put this together. So this is basically our background understanding and, and recommendation of this up until uh, now, actually. Um, so looking into this, uh, in 1996, uh, uh, medical use of it was legalized in, in California. Uh, and now it's legal actually in 20 other states uh, and recreational use is legalized in four states plus uh, Washington, D.C. Uh, so, uh, so, so what is our understanding uh, today of what uh, this can do for you? So it's actually very interesting in that our bodies have uh, this, this system of uh, cannabinoid uh, receptors. Uh, very much similar to opiate, uh, opioid uh, receptors where uh, under certain circumstances, the body will itself produce uh, what they call endocannabinoids, cannabinoids, where you get this, in layman's term, natural high from whatever. Uh, runners speak of a runner's high. Uh, and so this system where the body sort of produces these chemicals to uh, suppress pain, uh, for instance, uh, uh, to accentuate, you know, pleasurable activities, etc., uh, and it's it's part of the natural uh, system. So, so these are classified as uh, cannabinoid uh, receptors one and two, and uh, one is mostly in the central system, uh, whereas two is, is out in the periphery. 
In the eye, uh, CB1 receptors are in trabecular meshwork, uh, uh, ciliary body, and the retina. Uh, CB2 receptors are in the trabecular meshwork, uh, retina, as well as the glial cells of the optic nerve. Uh, and again, these are uh, uh, activated by uh, endocannabinoids that are naturally produced in the, within our bodies. And so what are the, the possible effects of this? Well, uh, we know that local administration of uh, uh, these cannabinoid uh, agonists uh, can have significant IOP reduction uh, outside of the systemic uh, effect. So, you know, some people may say that, you know, it's, it could be part of the hypotensive effect. But, uh, but the hypotensive effect, uh, should, it's usually about a 10 to 1 ratio, but uh, in studies have been shown that uh, you can get, you know, four or five uh, uh, millimeter mercury drop in IOP uh, with a 10 millimeter drop in systolic uh, blood pressure. So there's definitely a uh, local effect uh, in the eye, uh, and it can, it can be mediated through uh, trabecular meshwork uh, drainage. It may be mediated through the uveal scleral outflow. It does have some cross reactivity to prostaglandin uh, agonists as well. Uh, and there's been some evidence that it may have a neuroprotective effect on uh, retinal uh, ganglion cells in uh, at least a rat model. Uh, and it also has an antioxidative uh, effect. And so, so actually it is quite promising. Uh, as a new class of uh, medication. Uh, the exact mechanism of action is quite complicated. It uh, binds, causes CMP, uh, CAMP uh, uh, increase through uh, intracellular G protein, uh, and uh, you know, all of that uh, basically happens. Uh, but again, what exactly happens after that isn't uh, all that clear or, or easily uh, understandable. Uh, but uh, it basically, uh, what is the end result? Well, some people get high, but you get <laughs> lower uh, intraocular pressure uh, as well. And so, so what is the problem? Why haven't we gotten a, a new uh, a THC uh, medication as glaucoma treatment? Uh, the problem is uh, a lot of it is pharmacological. Uh, the, the compound itself is lipophilic, so it's hard to get it into an aqueous solution where you can administer it to the eye. Uh, also, the penetration of it is uh, as difficult as in that there actually is some uh, receptors in the cornea uh, as well that may take up this uh, medication. Also, the endothelial uh, cells have some receptors, and there may be uh, some evidence that it actually uh, inhibits the function of endothelial cells, and that's not good for the eye, obviously. Um, <clears throat> and then, obviously, the, you don't want to avoid the, the, the CNS effect uh, of this. But there is some promising uh, research into this area. So, uh, you can modify the, the, uh, the compound to, so that it can uh, dissolve in, uh, in water. Uh, you can esterify it, uh, and there may be some other uh, cannabinoid, uh, cannabinoid uh, agonists that uh, uh, have better pharmacological uh, profile for, uh, for use as a medication. And what are the uh, regulatory hurdles? Uh, well, there's, even for recreational use, there is a, um, a gap between uh, state uh, control and state laws versus federal laws. Because in uh, federal laws, it's still an illegal uh, substance. And uh, so as, as far as wanting to do research, for instance, if you want to do a, uh, NIH research, you have to apply to the NIH. To, you know, there's regulatory hurdles to, to, uh, to overcome. Uh, but there are some advantages uh, as well. Uh, because it is already legalized for medical use, uh, the question arises, can you already today sell a THC glaucoma medication 
without having to go through the FDA, right? Because it's already legalized as a, as a medical, uh, as a medicine. So if you can do that, that would significantly shorten your pathway to commercialization. You probably wouldn't be able to sell it in the, the 30 other states that are not uh, allowing this, but uh, you know, in 20 states out of the country, and then you can shorten all of that FDA process, which is usually a billion dollars to, to get something to, uh, to approval, uh, is quite uh, attractive. Um, also, the intellectual property issue, because this was known in the 70s, so all of those patents that were filed have already expired. And so it's sort of open to anybody who can come up with something that, that actually works. And so that's, I think, what's the uh, most important, uh, most fascinating, interesting uh, part about this whole thing. So in summary, it, it, I feel that looking after looking through the literature, that it does have great potential as a, another class of uh, uh, glaucoma medication. And uh, there are some significant challenges, but also great uh, potential payoff uh, as well. So thank you very much for your attention.